The Leapfrog by Hans Christian Andersen Narrated by Carol Phillips A flea, a grasshopper and a leapfrog once wanted to see which could jump highest and they invited the whole world and everybody else besides who chose to come to see the festival. Three famous jumpers were they, as everyone would say when they all met together in the room. I will give my daughter to him who jumps highest, exclaimed the king, for it is not so amusing when there is no prize to jump for. The flea was the first to step forward. He had exquisite manners and bowed to the company on all sides, for he had noble blood and was, moreover, accustomed to the society of man alone, and that makes a great difference. Then came the grasshopper. He was considerably heavier, but he was well-mannered and wore a green uniform, which he had by right of birth. He said, moreover, that he belonged to a very ancient Egyptian family, and that in the house where he then was, he was thought much of. The fact was, he had been just brought out of the fields and put in a pasteboard house three stories high, all made of court cards with the coloured side inwards, and doors and windows cut out of the body of the Queen of Hearts. I sing so well, said he, that sixteen native grasshoppers, who have chirped from infancy, and yet got no house built of cards to live in, grew thinner than they were before for sheer vexation when they heard me. It was thus that the flea and the grasshopper gave an account of themselves, and thought they were quite good enough to marry a princess. The leapfrog said nothing, but people gave it as their opinion that he therefore thought the more, and when the house-dog snuffed at him with his nose, he confessed the leapfrog was of good family. The old counsellor, who had had three orders given him to make him hold his tongue, asserted that the leapfrog was a prophet, for that one could see on his back if there would be a severe or mild winter, and that was what one could not see even on the back of the man who writes the almanac. I say nothing, it is true, exclaimed the king, but I have my own opinion notwithstanding. Now the trial was to take place. The flea jumped so high that nobody could see where he went to, so they all asserted he had not jumped at all, and that was dishonourable. The grasshopper jumped only half as high, but he leapt into the king's face, who said that was ill-mannered. The leapfrog stood still for a very long time lost in thought. It was believed at last he would not jump at all. I only hope he is not unwell, said the house dog, when, pop, he made a jump all on one side into the lap of the princess, who was sitting on a little golden stool close by. Hereupon the king said, There is nothing above my daughter. Therefore to bound up to her is the highest jump that can be made. But for this one must possess understanding, and the leapfrog has shown that he has understanding. He is brave and intellectual and so he won the princess. It's all the same to me, said the flea. She may have the old leapfrog for all I care. I jumped the highest, but in this world merit seldom meets its reward. A fine exterior is what people look at nowadays. The flea then went into foreign service, where, it is said, he was killed. The grasshopper sat without on a green bank and reflected on worldly things. And he said too, yes, a fine exterior is everything. A fine exterior is what people care about. And then he began chirping his peculiar melancholy song 
from which we have taken this history, and which may, very possibly, be all untrue, although it does stand here printed in black and white. A biography of Hans Christian Andersen, narrated by Carol Phillips. Hans Christian Andersen, often referred to in Scandinavia as H. C. Andersen, born 2nd of April 1805, died 4th of August 1875, was a Danish author. Although a prolific writer of plays, travelogues, novels and poems, Andersen is best remembered for his fairy tales. Andersen's popularity is not limited to children. His stories, called Eventur in Danish, express themes that transcend age and nationality. Andersen's fairy tales, of which no less than 3,381 have been translated into more than 125 languages, have become culturally embedded in the West's collective consciousness, readily accessible to children, but presenting lessons of virtue and resilience in the face of adversity for mature readers as well. Some of his most famous fairy tales include The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, The Nightingale, The Snow Queen, The Ugly Duckling, Thumbelina and many others. His stories have inspired ballets, plays and animated and live-action films. One of Copenhagen's widest and busiest boulevards is labelled H. C. Anderson's Boulevard. Early Work A very early fairy tale by Anderson, The Tallow Candle, was discovered in a Danish archive in October 2012. The story, written in the 1820s, was about a candle that did not feel appreciated. It was written while Anderson was still in school, and dedicated to a benefactor, in whose family's possession it remained, until it turned up, among other family papers, in a local archive. In 1829, Anderson enjoyed considerable success with the short story A Journey on Foot from Holman's Canal to the East Point of Amaga. Its protagonist meets characters ranging from St. Peter to a talking cat. Anderson followed this success with a theatrical piece, Love on St. Nicholas's Church Tower, and a short volume of poems. Although he made little progress writing and publishing immediately thereafter, in 1833 he received a small travel grant from the king, thus enabling him to set out on the first of many journeys through Europe. At Jura, near Le Locle in Switzerland, Anderson wrote the story Agnete and the Merman. He spent an evening in the Italian seaside village of Sestre Levante, the same year, inspiring the title of The Bay of Fables. In October 1834, he arrived in Rome. Anderson's travels in Italy were to be reflected in his first novel, a fictionalised autobiography entitled The Improvisers, published in 1835 to instant acclaim. Fairy Tales and Poetry Anderson's initial attempts at writing fairy tales were revisions of stories that he had heard as a child. Initially, his original fairy tales were not met with recognition, due partly to the difficulty of translating them. In 1835, Anderson published the first two instalments of his fairy tales, more stories, completing the first volume, were published in 1837. The collection comprises nine tales, including The Tinderbox, The Princess and the Pea, Thumbelina, The Little Mermaid, 
and the emperor's new clothes. The quality of these stories was not immediately recognised and they sold poorly. At the same time, Anderson enjoyed more success with two novels, O.T., published 1836, and Only a Fiddler, published 1837. The latter work was reviewed by a young Sir and Kierkegaard. After a visit to Sweden in 1837, Anderson became inspired by Scandinavism and committed himself to writing a poem that would convey the relatedness of Swedes, Danes and Norwegians. In July 1839, during a visit to the island of Funen, Anderson wrote the text of his poem Jeg er en Skandinav, I am a Scandinavian, to capture, quote, the beauty of the Nordic spirit, the way the three sister nations have gradually grown together, end quote, as part of a Scandinavian national anthem. Composer Otto Lindblad set the poem to music and the composition was published in January 1840. Its popularity peaked in 1845, after which it was seldom sung. Anderson returned to the fairy tale genre in 1838 with another collection, Fairy Tales Told for Children, new collection, first booklet, which consists of The Daisy, The Steadfast Tin Soldier and The Wild Swans. 1845 saw a breakthrough for Anderson with the publication of four translations of his fairy tales. The Little Mermaid appeared in the periodical Bentley's Miscellany, followed by a second volume, Wonderful Stories for Children. Two other volumes enthusiastically received were A Danish Storybook and Danish Fairy Tales and Legends. A review that appeared in the London journal The Athenaeum in February 1846 said of wonderful stories, This is a book full of life and fancy, a book for grandfathers no less than grandchildren, not a word of which will be skipped by those who have it once in hand. Anderson would continue to write fairy tales and publish them in instalments, until 1872.